I guess we have a couple bullies on our hand, mainly Margie. Mean girls. Jeez. It's the ultimate year of shame if you screw up planting. First time we're talking about chemo. It's true. I'm scared. But yesterday was the worst I've seen her mentally. Are you happy over here? You look pretty happy. Oh, you guys banished? <laughs> There's a plane on top of our canola. They're totally doing a flyover. <laughs> Good morning, back on the roller again. I thought I would catch up with you guys before I started rolling. Uh, it's just, it's a bit challenging and really loud once this thing starts moving over these stones. Uh, we are planting soybeans. So we roll for a little bit of a different reason now. So this, this field has already been planted. This was Mark's first field. So yeah, he finished this last night and then I just finished refilling him now and he's at a different field. He's not having a great time over there. The ground is so hard. He's having a hard time, hard time with that avatar going into the ground, the air seeder. So yeah, uh, I haven't heard him talk about it lately. So I'm wondering after we filled it, if there was enough weight on the machine that it actually got in the ground. I always say that when I don't hear anything, he's happy. <laughs> yeah, so the reason why we roll after soybeans are planted is to actually knock down any stones we can't see. So this is no-till. This is absolutely ideal. We did smooth out the headlands in the fall. We did we did work the headlands just because it was pretty rough, I think, when we went to harvest this corn. Uh, but the rest of the field is no-till. And that's what we love for soybeans. Like, if we can leave as much residue over the winter on these fields, the better. Typically, these machines can go into the, gro into the ground no problem and plant. But for whatever reason, this year, the ground is just, has just gone really, really hard. So we roll beans after we plant them to push the stones down. So the difference between corn and say wheat and soybeans is, uh, especially soybeans, our header is right really, really flat on the ground. It's a flex, so it moves a little bit. Um, so it's very, very easy to pick up stones. And as you saw in my last video, our farms are really good at growing stones. They just can, they can make their way into the combine, especially in soybean harvest corn we can lift the head a bit it's not like that it doesn't really ride on the ground you can lift it as high as you want we always roll soybeans right after we plant or after the plants come up a little bit and it's warm and the plant is still flexible enough that it'll bounce back so those are the two timings that we would be able to roll soybeans if the weather catches us and we can't we can't uh, roll before the beans come up we can still do it after the beans are up but even that has to be staged really really well well it was going really well but I broke the roller I broke her wing her left wing so uh, I'm going to take over for Mark he is going to teach me again because we have to teach Sandy everything every year on uh, how to run the air seeder so I'm going to be planting beans and he's going to somehow put my lady back together I don't know how he trusts me running this after breaking the roller, but that just goes to show you that he must love me. Or he has absolutely no other option. We've done a complete round. This is my second round, and I think I remember how to do this from last year. I needed a quick little tutorial, but more just the GPS and how fast he wants me to go and when he wants me to lift and when he wants me to drop, all that stuff. So hopefully we got it figured out. If not, everyone can laugh at my rose from the road. It's great. It's the ultimate year of shame if you screw up planting. I forgot to tell you guys where we were. This is uh, Mark and I's first farm that we bought together. Well, he bought it. I didn't buy it. I was in the university still. Um, so yeah, this farm we bought in 1997. It is the only farm we own solo. Um, there's a few other farms he owns with his 
dad, like 50-50, not many. And then the rest of the farms we rent, really, from his dad and his mom, and one neighbor just down the road here. So we're lucky that we have a uh, family that likes us <laughs> and uh, generously lets us operate their farm as if it's our own, which is great. We have full uh, management, decision-making, all the things. We treat it like it's our own. It's a really good arrangement. We also get all the manure from my father-in-law and brother-in-law's chicken operation, where I used to work, actually. So that all helps. So it's it just goes to show you, you don't have to be um, all working under the same umbrella to still work together and make it work. Uh, it took us a long time to get where we are, and I just think um, I'm very grateful for this YouTube channel because it does help Mark and I farm on our own, even though we don't, it doesn't look like we own very much. We just, we can't afford to own a lot. The YouTube channel helps us with equipment payments and with the sheep stuff, any equipment we want to buy for the sheep barn. Uh, it's like having an off-farm job, but I get to meld it into the farm, which is really, really nice. So I just, I thank you guys for supporting the channel because it is, it really does help Mark and I farm on our own at ages almost 50, which is ridiculous, but it goes to show you it is really, really hard financially for young farmers to do this work that we all very much need in society. So uh, I give I give younger farmers, first generation, I give them so much credit because we wouldn't be able to do what we do if it wasn't, um, if we didn't have the help of our family. So anyway, we see you. And we love you and we appreciate you. I'm tired. Good morning. I'm tired. It's eight o'clock. But I'm jobless and don't do anything with my life. You have a puppy, you're a parent. Uh, we are at our very important chemo appointment. Appointment today, yeah. So are you nervous or you're no. you're not nervous. That's good. No. We're a little excited. Just to see what the next step is. Yeah, I just want to know what the plan is. I hate not knowing. So, let's All right. do this. Chat soon. <laughs> it is time. Chemo time. Well, not today, hopefully. Not, but like, this Info. is the first time we're talking about chemo. It's true. I'm scared. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> You're braver than me. Well, we are back. Uh, I'm not going to lie and say it's been a great day. It's been a pretty scary day. And we're not doing real good. <laughs> so, um, probably not going to talk about it in great detail right now because I'm just borderline keeping it together. And I watched like a TikTok this morning and it was a couple ladies that have a pretty funny podcast. They're like, I'm so sick of people crying on their YouTube videos or their videos to get attention. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So now I'm like super paranoid that that's what people think. And me, it's just I can't, I can't actually control my emotion. And I've been sort of holding it in since Jess sort of broke in the middle of the appointment. So I, yeah, I can feel it sort of bubbling. Also, Mark has been having a heck of a, heck of a time here at home. Um, the ground has just got really dry and really hard. And he's having just a brute of a time trying to get equipment to work right. So um, we haven't had our like debrief yet and he's my best friend and I need to talk to him so once I'm able to talk to him then I'll be able to get back to you guys but um this is going to be an all summer process I think we're going to start chemo on the 29th of May and it's going to go to the end of August and it's pretty aggressive so that's all I know right now and my daughter is uh resting on the couch with her puppy so um, gate. Oh, how's it Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jealous. I need one really bad. Yeah, I need uh, one really bad. Oh, got one. Look, Back in the tube, curly. I get sore ears. Oh, 
You haven't been very nice. Hmm? Tomatoes. Good morning. Latest update from my um, retirement village plus the young bucks. Uh, I guess we have a couple bullies on our hand, mainly Margie. She is trying to throw around her dominance. Hey, you are the alpha. You and Billy's mom. Uh, the rest, uh, Big Mama couldn't be bothered, probably because she's too slow, and Ruby loves everyone. So they are, they are good. Tomatoes has been like the Walmart greeter. She's been amazing with the young ones. She's going out right now. But Billy's mom and Margie are alphas, and they are not being inclusive at all. Are they? So Carissa says every day she comes out here and Peta and uh, Teddy are hiding behind the hay feeders. It was nice to see them in the barn this morning. Wow, mean girls. Jeez. Is this where you hide, you guys? Tomatoes is being lovely. Thank you for being your friend, Tomatoes. Found the grass, that's good. Well, today is cold, if you couldn't tell by my attire. I think it's like seven degrees Celsius right now and calling for a really cold night tonight. So Mark is a little concerned. The canola has done very well in frost conditions for us before. Panicking a little bit about our wheat. It's just in a very critical stage right now. I'm a little bit here and there and everywhere. I went to the post office this morning and you guys are just unbelievably generous. I haven't even had a chance to empty the truck, but uh, Thank you for the cards and the gifts. Uh, most, I think most everything is probably for Jess. I haven't actually looked yet, but uh, thank you so much. It's um, not necessary, but we, we feel very blessed and uh, yeah, just very generous and we're continuously blown away. I am heading back to the field, the field that makes me nauseous. I'm going one more time to work it. Mark wants to follow behind me with the, with the uh, air seeder. We're into very dry conditions right now and the wind has been insane the last few days. And it's very, very critical to conserve moisture at this point. We don't have a lot of rain in the forecast. There's a, there's a fairly good chance Friday night into Saturday. And if we don't get that, it is clear for like as far as I can see on our 14 days. So very critical for rain this weekend. Um, and a lot of our ground is just, it's becoming so dry and so hard that uh, it's it's been... It's been tough. So yeah, I'm gonna run down there and then I'm only gonna do about half the field and then I'm gonna run home, grab the trailer and actually ship, ship those last market lambs that Chris and I organized this morning and then come back and do the second half. Uh, Mark didn't want me to get too far ahead because he's actually finishing another field right now. So um, he didn't want the dirt basically blowing away before he got in there. So just a little bit of uh, logistics today. Shockingly, this field is much smoother than when I started it the other day, which it should be. I worked it like two different directions and rolled it, so thankfully I'm not as seasick as a few days ago. Uh, update on Jess. Uh, yesterday was tough, and by last night she had a little nap yesterday afternoon, and she, she came around and she was much more herself. Jess is like one of the strongest people mentally that I know. Like she's just, she can 
she can handle a lot. But yesterday was the worst I've seen her mentally. And it gave her a migraine and she had to take a little nap with the puppy when we got home. So uh, it was good to see her more herself. Our friend Lauren came over and visited her last night. So that I think helped just having someone else, not just her mom, like hovering over her. <laughs> so Jess is a bit of an internalizer. So when she goes quiet, I worry. Um, so today's a much better day. She got called back in actually, uh, the hospital called at seven this morning because she came downstairs at like 20 after seven. I'm like, what are you doing up? Because she's never awake that early. I'm usually on puppy, puppy watch for a bit while she sleeps in. Um, and she said, yeah, the hospital called and they wanted to do uh, an audio test. So two of the drugs, there's three drugs that they're gonna give her for chemo. Um, one, they have to do a pulmonary, ch uh, pulmonary test first because the one is really hard on your lungs. And then the second one is actually a hearing, an audio test because it can do some major damage to your hearing. If it seems like there's some damage happening, they're gonna actually substitute those drugs for like a cousin drug. Uh, yeah, a lot of tests and stuff even before we begin chemo. So she went today to that all by herself. I just stayed out of it. And I said, if you want me to go, I'll go. And she said, no, I wanna do it by myself. So we let her do it by herself today. I let go of the reins for a day. She's my baby. A few of you have been asking about Jack and how he's doing through this whole thing. He's been, uh, he's been really good. Him and Jess are really, really close. Uh, so I think they do a lot of talking back and forth that we don't, we don't hear necessarily. I've always just felt like Jack's been out of the loop more than anything. Like I feel like I've been like fully just focused on Jess and then I feel guilty about Jack. However, uh, this chemo, it sounds like uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of driving to the hospital and the hospital's actually not too far from where Jack works. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm probably gonna try my best to take the brunt of the uh, chemo appointments with Jess, at least to start and get the feel for how long they're gonna be and what she needs and all that stuff. And then I, what I might do is actually pass the baton on to Jack because he can drop her off. It sounds like it's gonna be pretty much an all day process from beginning to end. Um, so it's sort of gonna work out that if we can book her appointment early in the morning, Jack can take her on the way to his work. And by the time she's done, he's probably soon probably done his shift anyway. So it might very much work out. And even if you can just do one and we can do the other, that would be great too. And we have lots of family around that would be glad to help us. So I think it's gonna work out. It just needs, um, it needs like run through a time or two before we make some big concrete plans, but it is a good way to get Jack involved. So I feel pretty good about that. He's more than willing to do it, which is great. All right, I better catch this GPS line. Well, it is golden hour, as Jess likes to call it, and we're at one of my most favorite farms. Check it out. I think it's your favorite farm, actually. I think, if you watch my channel. It's getting to be that time of night where my mind starts racing about everything that is ahead of us. And uh, although Jess and I are planners, and we like the fact that we know when chemo is starting, it's starting on May 29th, 
Um, I've been looking right next door here, and that's our hayfield. And it has it is not lost on me that that week will be probably the week we are doing first cut hay. Like I'm already thinking two weeks ahead, you know, like I should contact Ethan, I should get him lined up. What if Jess is up all night throwing up? Like how, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna make it work? And it's, it's so easy to get lost in the future when I think right now, health-wise, mental health-wise, we gotta like just deal with right now, just get today done and the next day done. Like we're not even done planting yet and I'm already thinking about harvesting first cut hay. One thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, a, a good friend. She is also a support person for her husband who's going through very similar regime as Jess will be doing. So he's like, I think he's already nicely into his second cycle. So she's already ahead of us on this journey and she has been a godsend for me because it's like okay prepare for this prepare for this if people offer you rides take it it's amazing that she reached out to me I had no idea he was going through this and uh, not that it's nice to have someone who understands what you're going through but it's nice to have someone who knows what you're going through Good evening. Yes, this is the first time I've had a chance to pick up the camera today. We've been in, uh, we've just been in the fields, just busy. I think we only have a few days left of uh, planting soybeans. Hi guys. Carissa uh, wanted me to look at a couple of these feeders. There's corn all over the ground. And what I am thinking is I think they're picking through it to get to the pellet and they're just making a mess. Um, there is a couple holes though on the side, it's just corroded, so I, I did get some Gorilla Tape, so I'm going to take those holes up. She also said the feeders actually wouldn't fill. Oh, I know why. The proc switch has been plugged, I think. Oh yeah, look at the corn. Oh, kids! That is all corn all over. So some comes out here, but I don't know how much. We will tape it up anyway. Tomato's being nice. Yeah, I think she is. Hi, popcorn. Hi. Hi, Ruby. Oh. Meanie Marge. So mean. That's our Alberta wildfire sun, you figure? Yeah, the smoke is supposed to be bad, I think, tomorrow. That's crazy. I've only got my exposure up. is so pretty that our neighbor actually took a picture and sent it to me the other day and she goes can you just grow this in all your fields <laughs> I said I would love to but I don't really know what we do every year after that can't really grow canola on canola on canola on canola no be pretty though you get black leg oh it's so pretty Oh, yeah. 
Good morning. Uh, the day started really early today because Mark was down the stairs at like 5 30 this morning. I'm like, what are you doing awake? He's like, rain is coming. And we've got quite a bit of work still to do. We have some farms uh, about five miles away and they're the last two that need soybeans. I don't think we're going to get that in before the rain. And Mark said, honestly, they need a good rain before we do that. So uh, that might be next week's job. And quite honestly, we need a bit of a break. I think it's been a it's been a pretty big push to get what we've got done. We've done really well. I think Mark said as of last night, he's planted 850 or 60 acres. So we've done well. The corn is in the ground. We are three quarters of the way through soybeans. I think there's 170 acres left. I think something like that. So we're doing good. I'm back on the roller. Uh, we had a little bit of an injury with our roller yesterday and uh, Mark had to weld the the other wing. <laughs> it's been working good ever since, knock on wood, but this roller's 28 years old. Doesn't owe us anything, but we just need to get it over like a couple hundred more acres. sure if I even told you guys what we were doing with that planter this morning we were cleaning out the rest of the corn seed and flipping it over to beans we did majority of our beans we plant with our air seeder but Mark really wants to do some side-by-side -side comparisons between uh, planting some so planting some soybeans with our planter which would be 30 inch spacings versus our air seeder um, the way it plants which is I believe 15 inch spacing so half of that uh, we'll do some yield comparisons um, there's a plane on top of our canola I bet they're getting some footage our neighbor has like a flying service so I wonder if they're just doing a flyover it is beautiful the canola is gorgeous they're totally doing a flyover 100 percent not too many people grow canola in our area, so when we grow it, it's quite a public attraction. Um, there was a car pulled over and people taking pictures last night, and as we got for as we got closer, I'm like, "Isn't that your mom?" <laughs> so I think maybe her, my, his mom was out taking pictures last night. Anyway, I think it's on Facebook too. Our neighbors are taking pictures, so they love it right now because it smells really nice and it looks beautiful. But they're gonna hate it in like a few weeks when it starts to rot and it smells like rotting cabbage then they won't be so happy. Anyways, yes, yeah, so what I was saying is we were just flipping over the planter, so it's got cert it's got discs in it with um, corn, sort of corn singulation, so it would match what we want to plant. The discs for the soybeans, there's more holes uh, closer together, so it plants more soybean seeds and corn. I think that's how it works. So we were just interchanging all that out this morning. It didn't take very long, and then we just had to clean out a, the little bit of corn that was left and uh, put in new soybeans, so. That is what you witnessed.
Jessica. Sup. Are you reading? Yeah. What are you reading? Zodiac Academy. Dirty artillery. Oh, I can't get my hand. <laughs> Piper's been off her leash all afternoon. Mm-hmm. She was off all morning. I feel good. Yeah? Tired. I didn't sleep very good. Mm-hmm. 